it was the hardest three hours of my life <laughs> Hello, it's Labour, how are you? So I want to share with you my labour and birth story. I loved watching these throughout my pregnancy. This might be helpful for you if you're expecting and you just wanna know what it's like or you just wanna be nosy and know how my labour was. I had a Desoa on the 25th of January, which was a Wednesday. The night before, the Tuesday morning, I woke up in a bit of a panic and a scare because um, I felt like she hadn't moved throughout the night. I really panicked and I wanted to go to hospital to you know, make sure everything was okay. Now, I probably wouldn't have, but it had happened the Saturday before as well. I woke up and I was like, my god my baby hasn't moved what's going on and usually what happens is you know when you're in the bath and you're pregnant you pour water over your tummy the baby reacts to that and i wasn't getting any reaction so i said to the hubby i think we should go to the hospital i explained to them the situation by this point i was like 39 weeks and four days or so this was on the tuesday right so i went in and I was just sort of going there hoping to just get a checkup, right? So they strapped, as they do, they strap all these things to your tummy and they're checking for, you know, the baby's heartbeat. I heard the baby's heartbeat and I felt at rest and strapped me to this monitor, put all of this stuff on me and um, they checked the baby's heartbeat and felt like, okay. So they gave me this button to press whilst they were checking the baby's heartbeat and they wanted me to be strapped to this thing for about 30 minutes and every time I felt the baby kick, I should press the buttons. Then afterwards I had a consultation with, with one of the midwives and she explained to me, okay, you know, we could give you a sweet to speed things along since I am already 39 plus weeks go for a walk around because potentially what it could mean is if the fetus has reduced movement it could mean that the fetus is distressed or the fetus wants to come out and you know they they want to be on the best side of things they gave me a sweep <laughs> i'm not going to explain to you what a sweep is if you don't know but yeah they gave me a sweep I vaguely remember having a sweep with my first son israel but what happened is my waters had broken and with this, my waters hadn't broken. Anyway, I went for a walk and literally nothing happened. I did not feel a flinch. And they strapped me back onto the monitor again, told me to use the clicky thing. And they said, okay, they're going to get a doctor to talk to me and maybe I might want to consider getting induced. Now, at this point I was like, induced? Me being quite naive thinking, oh, how, how hard can it be induced? I women mothers tend to you know deter away from being induced and at this point they weren't forcing me to they were saying there's something to consider so they weren't saying all right you should definitely like we're gonna keep you here you have to be induced but because i wasn't past my due date i was approaching my due date they were giving me the option they gave me these leaflets and explained to me how the procedure works and the type of induction they'll give me they'll shove something in, up in there to get the cervix to soften and all this madness i was like okay i agreed to it i said right okay i'll i'll go for it only that i was so over being pregnant just kind of thought oh how how bad can it be women get induced all the time and i just didn't know the severity of it so i agreed to it and they were like okay that means you're you know you're gonna have your baby today most likely that was on a tuesday that was the 24th of january and in the meantime we'll prepare space for you now i don't know if any of you are aware of what's going on in the nhs right now but there is an extreme shortage of beds especially during the winter time it's even worse so we were in hospital and advised us oh I should get my hospital bag I could go home get my hospital bag come back because I'm most likely gonna have this baby today and okay cool that was on the 24th got back from our walk strapped me to the monitor thing again spent pretty much the whole day in hospital waiting for a bed that was the essence of it we were just eating we were just whiling away the time let's go and look where you've got, you've got chin -chin. I'm so happy. 
they kept monitoring me they uh, not monitoring me per se but monitoring the baby they got to the hospital the maternity ward at 6 a.m i didn't get a bed until 8 p.m the procedure was is that they weren't going to induce me until they had a space for me because they don't want to put me in labor and then they've got nowhere to keep me they put me in this labor room the the inducing drug whatever that they were going to shove up there then the midwife starts putting a drip strapping a drip to my hand not a drip not the actual drip itself but you know the needle and the syringe and stuff and i panicked when i say i absolutely freaked out because i was so aware that i didn't want drugs i didn't want to take any sort of um epidural or anything like that just because of the side effects that i had with my first child i had an epidural and being told that you know i have to have this on me just in case i remember saying to my husband whatever happens do not let them give me any drugs now we're playing the waiting game now i'm very aware that having been in labor before that i should get moving to kind of keep keep this process going explain to us that it could take up to six hours before it starts to kick in I do have footage I will insert it now if you see me smiling and whatnot it's because the real deal hasn't happened yet I'm yet enough walking around enough dancing let's just chill let's sleep two o'clock in the morning now that's exactly six hours later the pain hits me like thunder it was so severe and so bad it was nothing like my last two labors looking back now in hindsight i realized why you know women don't want to get induced because it's a medical procedure it's sudden the the pains the contractions happen so suddenly and it's not a natural build up it just comes like a thud and it kind of it just woke me up out of you know my sleep this is it i've got to start moving and i had to mentally rethink how i was thinking so changing the idea of oh this is pain to this is just helping my body open up this pain that i'm feeling is helping my body open up so that my baby can come out so you need to be strong so they don't give you any drugs because at this point anything can happen so i said to my husband can you tell them that i'm having contractions now and so he told the midwife on the ward and she was like oh what does she want painkillers like do i want paracetamol i'm like is this woman okay like do i want paracetamol no when she heard that she was like oh she doesn't want painkillers so the pain must not be that bad <laughs> no girl the pain was bad you know i was adamant in my mind that i didn't want painkillers comes over finally and she tells me to sit on the bed like to lie down in the bed now if any of you have been in labor before do you know how uncomfortable it is to lie down on your back when you are having severe contractions it is the most excruciating pain and like your body does not want to lie on your back because that is where the pain is you kind of want to be on all fours you want to be on your knees you want to be upright but you do not want to be on your back and she's telling me i have to lie down i'm like i don't want to lie down straps me back to the monitors because she needs to check how the baby's doing and they're checking every time like in between contractions and while i'm having contractions how the baby's doing and this woman this midwife wasn't the nicest of midwives i was thinking what was all in all my labor was about three hours praise the lord but it was the hardest three hours of my life the doctor comes you know what the doctor's gonna do Doc is how dilated i am and he's like okay we're gonna move her to the labor ward now she's five centimeters i was like thank god i don't know when my mum turned up but my mum was there and bye bye to that not very nice midwife because i didn't really like her and i met by another midwife now when i tell you this midwife was absolutely incredible she was amazing she was so calm she was she just put me through my paces she wasn't patronizing she wasn't like she was just amazing she that urge to push like to do a number two came upon me at this point i was thinking let them give 
let them give me what they want to give me let them give me the drugs i'll take everything i can't because this is too much pain for me i think they've given me gas and air and i was like they're not gonna give me more than gas and air i felt the urge to want to be in an upright position on my knees so i was trying to turn around so the midwife was like how about we just raise the bed up and you can lean on the bed rather than putting all your weight on your husband <laughs> she puts the head of the bed in an upright seated position and allows me to be knees on the bed turn around does that make sense um i had the gas in there the urge to push came upon me and it just felt like I was being put through fire. And I don't know how many pushes I did. The midwife was like, okay, if this is how you wanna do it, fine. Like she didn't tell me that I had to lie down again. She just said, okay, you need to spread your legs to give the baby space. I remember everything she was saying. I pushed and I pushed and little Bubba came flooding out and the relief oh i said she was born at 518 just over three hours. I'm so grateful that it wasn't a long labor. My first labor was about 14 hours. The second labor was six hours and this labor was three hours. I'm grateful that I didn't take any painkillers and they felt me strong enough to bear through it and just go through it with gas and air. And that is my labor and birth story. I've tried to keep it as concise as I possibly can. You get the picture. I hope this has or been informative for you. I can understand why women don't want to get induced because it's that feeling of when it comes, when the contractions come, they come so suddenly. If you do make a decision like I did, you have to be aware of the implications and you know, some of the precautions they're going to carry out. They may give you painkillers, such and such. Or if you are pregnant or you're expecting all the best in your delivery, I wish you a safe delivery. When I look back now, it was very safe and I was in good hands. My midwife was absolutely amazing. 518, I had her by midday. I was at home. I was at home in time for lunch. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already. I make family diaries and I also do natural hair videos. So stay tuned and be subscribed. Until my next video, think smart, work hard, make it happen. Bye.